Hello all, uh, welcome to today's lecture. In this lecture, we will be discussing on Stanford Binet scale. The Stanford Binet scale is the first intelligence test. I hope you have already gone through the types of intelligence tests. A PPT has been sent to, uh, sent to your Google Classroom. Uh, whoever not uh, reviewed the types of intelligence tests, please go through it. Uh, before moving on to the Stanford Binet scale, we will discuss on the intelligence test. An intelligence test is designed to measure the global mental capacity of an individual in terms of verbal comprehension, perceptual organization, reasoning, etc. The main purpose or the major purpose of any intelligence test is to determine a individual's suitability uh, for an occupation or the scholastic work. Uh, as I said before, Stanford Bini scale is the uh, first intelligence test which was developed by uh, Alfred Binet in the year 1905. The Stanford Binet scale is in its fifth version and in this lecture we will be discussing on the different versions of the test and the developmental history and the theoretical concepts uh, of the test. As I said before, Alfred Binet developed the uh, first intelligence scale known as Bini Simon test. Alfred Binet was the first person uh, who established a psychological laboratory in France in the year 1889. Later, uh, Binet was approached by the French government to devise a to measure the developmental delay in children. So he, along with uh, a physician in Saint Yon Asylum, Dr. Simon, developed the first intelligence test known as Binet Simon test. Binet and Simon scale of 1905 version consisted of 30 items. Each item arranged in ascending order of difficulty. That means as we progress from one item to the another, the difficulty increases. Actually, this uh, scale measures the intelligence among uh, children with developmental delay. Thus, the scale is an incomplete measure to uh, identifying the intelligence in uh, school going children. Thus, Binney and Simon revised the scale in 1908 and included age level assessment. This was the most popularized version of the Binney Simon. After this uh, edition, it was popularized in USA and has undergone several other revisions. We will be discussing on the major revisions of the Binney and Simon scale. Uh, later, in 1911, Binney and Simon again revised the scale and included or extended the age range from 3 years to adult level. This was the last assessment by Binet in his lifetime. Uh, the most popular uh, revision of the Binet Simon scale was done in Stanford University and it is thus known as Stanford Binet scale. The most important among the revisions, the most important revision was done by Terman. In the year 1961 uh, this revision has given a new outlook for the scheme and it was re-standardized in American population of sample size 1400 it included 1000 uh, thousand children and 400 adults in the scale Terman included or uh, incorporated the concept of IQ this was the first scale which included the concept IQ. IQ is the intelligence quotient. It is the ratio between the mental age and, and the chronological age into 100 of an individual. Later in 1937, again uh, Thurman Murray uh, revised the scale. In this uh, revision, had two equivalent forms that is named as L and M. The next version of Stanford uh, Binet scale was done in the year 1960. In this version of 1960, they had they have campaigned the two equivalent forms of 1937 version. That is the L form and the M form. They combined and uh, they retained all the items of L form and M form in this particular version. And uh, they combined it together to form a single form. Thus, the form is known as L M form. In this version of 1960, they have extended the age from 2 years to 22 years and 11 months. They measure the ability in, uh, in 7 categories. That is from language reasoning, memory, social intelligence, 
conceptual uh, numerical reasoning and visual motor ability the test items are presented to the subject through words objects and pictures the rep responses of the subject is recorded by calculations drawings writing and speaking the duration of the test is 1 hour and intelligence is measured by uh, finding the standard score of the deviation iq we will be discussing on deviation iq in the following classes the next revision of the test was done in the year 1972, that is by Thondike. In this revision, the scale has undergone the ARE standardization with a sample of 2,100 children. In this particular standardization, they have included non-white children also. This improved the psychometric properties of the test. Later, the fourth edition was released in the year 1986. In this revision also, they retain the chief advantage of the earlier editions as individually administered test. The, uh, the quality of the test improved uh, in both theoretical uh, conceptualization of intellectual abilities and the methodology of scale construction or test construction. The latest version of Stanford Binet scale is Stanford Binet 5 or SB5, which, which was developed by Royd in the year 2003. Now we will be moving on to the theoretical concepts in Stanford Binet scale. The Stanford Binet scale is developed based on the uh, fluid crystallized intelligence theory which is developed by Hahn and Null in the year 1997. According to this theory there are basically two types of intelligence. The one is fluid intelligence and the other is crystallized intelligence. The fluid intelligence involves all those abilities which allows an individual to acquire new, uh, new knowledge through thinking and reasoning. And the other, the crystallized intelligence uh, displays to all the knowledges and understanding a person acquires through the, uh, his fluid intelligence. The Binet scale is based upon uh, three level of hierarchical model. In this three, three level of hierarchical model, the first level comprises of the G factor. The Z factor reflects the common variability uh, of all the tasks and in the, in the next level there are mainly three group factors. One is crystallized abilities, the other is fluid analytic abilities and the other is short term memory. In the crystallized abilities, it is further categorized into two. The one is verbal reasoning, the other is quantitative reasoning. In the fluid abilities or fluid analytic abilities, it is further divided into abstract or visual reasoning. The other is shorter memory, which refers to uh, the ability of the individual to memorize an item which is given for a short period of time. Based on these factors, the Binet scale consists of 15 subtests. As I said before, uh, in the crystallized abilities, there are uh, two subcategories. One is verbal reasoning, the other one is quantitative reasoning. In the verbal reasoning, uh, there are four subtests. <coughs> the first one is vocabulary test. The vocabulary test, uh, the examinee is asked to name the object or uh, asked about a word or define a word, etc. Like uh, they may be asked the meaning for the word justification. They uh, or uh, what is the meaning of repeat? Okay. The next sub test is comprehension test. In the comprehension test, the examinees are asked to identify their body parts. Uh, in a higher version, they may be asked about practical problems and solving the problems, mainly uh, on social information, etc. Uh, like uh, we may ask if you see a house is under fire what will you do uh, these kind of questions were asked in the combination test when it comes to the adult ages okay the next test is absurdity test in the absurdity test absurdity means uh, something false or uncommon to our common sense so uh, in the absurdity test we ask the uh, subject to see an image and identify or verbalize the absurdity which they see in the image uh, the next test is verbal relation test and the verbal relation test uh, how things similar to uh, find the odd one like uh, the examinee will be presented with four words in which three words are related and the one is not related they have to identify the similar words or uh, the words which are related to each other and uh, 
select the odd one out. That is the verbal relation test. Next subcategory is quantitative reasoning. In the quantitative reasoning, there are three subtests. The first subtest sub is uh, quantitative test. In the quantitative test, they may be asked to uh, do some numerical questions or uh, they may be asked to count in the younger ages or in the uh, higher ages, they may be asked to uh, write about or uh, write an equation or so on. The next test is numerical se uh, number series test. In the number series test, they may be asked to uh, find the missing number in a series. Like they may be given 2, 4, 8, find the next number. Likewise, the test uh, follows. The next type is equation building test. In the equation building test, the subject is asked to form an equation. They might be given few numbers like 2, 3, one, they have to form a equation from that number and symbols. Like group factor is fluid analytic abilities. The fluid analytic ability is measured through abstract or visual reasoning. In the abstract or visual reasoning subcategory, there are mainly four subtests. The first subtest is pattern analysis. In the pattern analysis, the examinees are asked to complete form boards or replicate the visual patterns through manipulation. Uh, in the subtest, mainly they measure the eye-hand coordination, cognitive ability, shape uh, concept of the subject. The next subtest is copying test. In the copying test, the subject is asked to either copy a uh, copy or reproduce a block design using a card or uh, draw a geometrical figures uh, by seeing a model. The next subtest is matrices test. In the matrices test, the subject is asked to find a mixing pattern uh, in a matrix. They may, be, they may be given with alternatives. They have to select the most appropriate figure which joins or which uh, matches the matrix. The next one is paper folding and cutting test. In the paper folding and cutting test, a figure in which a piece of paper has been folded and cut. The examiner has to choose among the alternatives that show how the paper look if it were unfolded. Group factories. Short term memory. In the short term memory, also there are mainly four subtests. The first subtest is beat memory test. In the beat memory test, the subjects were asked to identify the beats or either redo a beat making. And the other uh, subtest is memory for sentence. In this uh, subtest, the subject or the examiner is asked to repeat a word in uh, in a sentence in the same order as it is presented. Uh, this test is similar to the uh, recall test in the recall test in the PGA memory scale. Uh, the next subtest is memory for digits test. This is similar to the digispan test where the, where the subject or examiner is presented with a series of number and they have to present it forward and backward depending on the comment. Next one is mem uh, memory for objects test. In the memory for objects test, the subject will be presented with few objects and they have to identify the objects which they have seen in the, uh, in the presentation. Now we can move on to the administration of Stanford Binet scale 4. The administration formally begins with an item from the vocabulary subtest. The level of the item is predetermined based on the chronological age of the examinee. The highest level of the vocabulary subtest where the examinee passes two, uh, two consecutive items is the level at which further testing will begin and hence the vocabulary test is known as routing test. After finding the routing age, uh, we move on to the next subtest starting from the routing age. Uh, the test continues till the subject failed either three or four items out of the four items at two consecutive levels. The two important concepts in the administration of Stanford Binet scale is 
basalage and silicate basalage uh, is the age in which or the lower level point where the two consecutive items approximately of equal difficulty is passed silicate is the age at which or the point at which uh, at least three out of four items are missed or failed then next we will move on to the latest version of stanford binet test sb5 the stanford binet test 5 that is sp5 was introduced in the year 2003 by dr gil royd the test reviewed for gender ethnic culture regional and socio economic biases uh, it also produces uh, three iqs the first one is full scale iq a verbal iq and a five composite iq the five factors of intelligence can be assessed by two distinct domains verbal and non verbal there are five factors uh, the factors are fluid reasoning knowledge quantitative reasoning visual spatial processing and working memory the thus the scale provides 10 subtest scores and 3 iq scores and 5 uh, factor scores iq and factor scores have norms based upon a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15 as usual uh, the for the routine procedure uh, which we have already discussed in sb4 uh, we have a separate set of items in the domains of verbal and non verbal these items are used for identifying the routine age these items can also be used for identifying or finding the abbreviated iq uh, or can be used as a screening test of iq the working memory test helps to uh, assess and understand the children with adhd so this is all about sp5 uh, so far we have discussed about the um, major concepts related to standard uh, stanford binet test thank you